because I use this this computer to run two businesses and I do a lot of uh, heavy editing and just a lot of uh, processor intensive projects I'm gonna install a new hard drive I've had this machine for about five years now and I still have the original hard drive in it it's got a, a 250 gig hard drive which has been more than adequate but it's just got so many hours on it, I feel like it's time before that drive fails and I lose a ton of information and a lot of my programs, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a new hard drive. I got a 500 gig this time, not really because I need the space, but just because they're, they're cheap. So the one thing that is really important is that um, it's serial ATA and it's also 7200 RPM. The RPMs is really important 5400 is generally what's in a laptop and a, a 5400 drive isn't quite adequate for doing really intensive editing and stuff like that so I go for the um, 7200s. They also make 10 and I think 15,000 RPM drives which are super fast but as far as reliability I think you get the, the best longevity and performance out of a 7200 RPM drive so that's what I've got. What's really, really great is that uh, Apple has really done a good job engineering the whole drive bay in this computer, so it's it only takes a few minutes in order to change out this drive. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this new one, and there it is, all crispy and new, and you can see it's different, um, it's power and it's different serial ports back here, which we'll need in just a second. So now, I'm going to go ahead and unplug the machine again. And now that that's unplugged, I'm going to go ahead and it just actually flickered at me. I saw the light come on. And that, that was a little bit of a power surge and you don't want to be working on it with it plugged in or with, you know, any power left in it. So I'm going to take out all this stuff again. My air deflector. And then, both my hard drives are up here and you can see that there is um, there are two of them in here you got enough light in there you need a little bit more there's two drives you've got your master drive on top and your slave drive on the bottom it's gonna automatically read off the top drive and that's my system drive so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist that thing up and then I'm gonna pull out these Actually, on both of these, I'm going to latch this back down until I get these out. So I'm just pulling out the serial cables here, and then the power cable that's on top. So now I'm going to flip that, that lever up, and then the whole drive should slide out. I'm going to be very careful not to pinch any of those cables. And it's hanging up on something here. I went ahead and took out my second drive. It just gave me a little bit more room to get this one out. What's really awesome about these is that they've got these little um, nubs on them, and that's all. Like, we just have to take these out and put them on our new drive and we're ready to go. These are on a lot tighter than I thought they were. So there's that one. That one's loose. All right. So now I got the four of these loose. Oh, got away. So here's my old drive. I'm going to go ahead and lay it down up here and then I just want to put these little screws on the new one and I'm not going to tighten them up so tight this time but that drive I don't think has ever been out of the computer so I think it's shipped from the factory like that and then to install this it's just the, the reverse process um, I am going to be sure that I've got these out of the way. If you look in here, you can see that I actually need to put that, that top drive bay into the middle slot. 
So it's not that it'll accommodate a few different sizes, but that the back end of this top drive needs to go in that middle slot and then it's gonna it's gonna slide in here and then up in the back. You can kind of see where I'm pointing there. That's where it'll slide up, and that's why I was having a hard time getting it out. So I'm gonna hand that to you. So now, let's see if I can do this with the light. So that was the middle slot, and then I can feel it um, after I push it about halfway in, I need to kind of pick up on the back end. And then it should go right in if I can get these cables out of the way. There it is. So there, if you can see in there, there's that new system drive in there. So that was a little bit trickier than I remembered, but I'd never had that one out. The bottom one is super easy because I'm just gonna stick it right in the bottom there. Make sure all these cables are out of the way. So I got it lined up on the two bottom sides and it slides right in. It's easy as a dream. And then I just have to latch these guys down and then I want to be sure that I'm plugging back in my power which is the smaller of the two. So there's my power and then the uh, serial cables for each of these. I'm going to do my power first because it's closer to me. So there's my power in, there's my serial cable in. And you want to check those and make sure they're in snugly. So then I can go ahead and uh, I'm going to plug the computer back in now. And then I'm going to put in my, uh, my air deflector and all that. So now, we're ready to go. That's how to put in a new system drive and actually how to do the other, your auxiliary drive. But now this is a brand new drive so there's nothing on it. Now I'm ready to install my new operating system.